Senator, I know you spend a lot of time working on these uh, relationships across the aisle. You had a, a very close relationship with Senator McCain. You have a group of senators who you get a lot of stuff done with behind the scenes, but the public mostly doesn't see any of the bipartisanship. They just see the clash. Is there something we could do to build a better foundation for the bipartisan work you want to do and change the nature of the public conversation so that we begin as a country to be able to listen to each other again and to learn from each other and to talk with each other in a way that might allow us to hear each other? Uh, well, it's, a, it's a, such a fundamental challenge. That is the basic challenge facing free and open societies in this uh, digital period. Um, first, confronting and combating disinformation, but second, um, dealing with polarization. And I, uh, I'll, I'll put it back at you and say it is our universities mm -hmm. um, where, and our schools uh, where we most need help with this. I did not grow up, you did not grow up in a digital era. Um, the idea of getting a majority of my news from Facebook still uh, confounds me. I mean, my wife and I uh, sit down and watch the national evening news, right? <laughs> every night, something that my grandparents did. You know, they watched Walter Cronkite. It was a big moment every night. You had to watch the national evening news. I am part of a very shrinking demographic. And uh, I have three uh, children who are college age, uh, mm -hmm. who are at different universities with different campus cultures. Uh, I will say, um, for better or worse, Congress is a representative institution. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the senators with whom I work most closely and with whom I've gotten the most done in foreign policy is, wait for it, Senator Lindsey Graham of South Carolina. We serve on the Judiciary Committee together and on the Appropriations Subcommittee. He's mm -hmm. my ranking member for foreign assistance. Um, Lindsey and I have passed and gotten signed into law several significant landmark foreign policy bills. We also go at each other hammer and tong on judiciary in a way that makes me want to <laughs> strangle him with my bare hands over the Supreme Court confirmations. And uh, I will just agree with you that I think most of my constituents only know Senator Graham uh, from some of the more contentious moments of recent confirmation uh, hearings. Um, but they would be dumbfounded at the frequency with which he and I are backstage at the judicial confirmations, working out the mechanics and the details of our shared and passionate support for foreign assistance. Mm -hmm. And I will never stop being grateful to Lindsey Graham for saving foreign assistance when he was the chairman of the subcommittee and President Trump, his close friend with whom he is closely aligned, was determined to cut it dramatically. I mean, he, year after year, Trump tried to cut our foreign assistance by more than a third and Senator Graham stopped him. Mm. So um, you're right, that isn't well enough known. It isn't well enough known that um, our president has signed into law recently bipartisan bills that actually do big things like fixing our postal system. Mm -hmm. Most folks think that's boring, but for week after week after week, I got more calls and letters from my local constituents mm -hmm. saying, hey, my medication didn't arrive on time. I run a small business. I didn't get my bills out. Mm -hmm. I sent a Christmas card or a birthday card to my niece and she didn't get it for three months. Fixing the post office was a bipartisan undertaking. Fixing our roads and bridges, our tunnels and highways, our access to broadband was a bipartisan undertaking. We need to educate Americans about what we can get done with compromise and what we can't get done without it. Uh, and frankly, our shattered media uh, landscape that rewards outrage uh, and does not in any way recognize or reward uh, compromise and bipartisanship uh, needs to change. So there's an effort in Congress, the Problem Solvers uh, Caucus, for example. There's others, a group called With Honor that supports veterans of both parties. Mm -hmm. uh, there are institutions in the Senate, um, the weekly prayer breakfast, uh, regular bipartisan trips overseas, the gym, which believe it or not, the Senator's only gym is one of the few mm -hmm. um, private bipartisan spaces we have. Um, there's more good bipartisan work going on than you might realize, um, but it is definitely swimming upstream against the currents of a culture um, that rewards spectacle and division. Um, so for anyone who's watching, um, think hard about how you conduct yourself as a student or as a teacher. Think hard about how you conduct yourself in your community, in your neighborhood. And if you find yourself regularly saying, well, so-and-so is just crazy, I can't work with him or her, think about what you're saying. 
Um, by describing your classmate, your colleague, your coworker as crazy, you're saying that they're beyond reason, that you can't have a discussion with them where you might disagree. And I worry that we are training a younger generation, uh, not in the politics of listening and of compromise and of deliberation, uh, but in the politics of outrage and of canceling. Um, and that puts the whole undertaking, the whole enterprise of democracy itself at risk.